Uh, Elgin, go ahead, man, before you get us in more trouble. <laughs> nah, man. Uh, listen, transitioning to a more serious topic. Listen, man, I know we have been struggling with the pandemic, particularly from an economic standpoint. Uh, folks are losing their jobs, man. The eviction moratorium is about to be lifted. The utility disconnection termination moratorium here in Pennsylvania is about to be lifted. Uh, so folks are struggling, man. On top of that, capitalism has conditioned us to go balls to the wall for Christmas. So we're buying shit that our kids really don't need, our wives don't need, all this other extra shit. But on top of that, just life in general is difficult. So here comes the politicians offering a stimulus bill. But within that stimulus bill, folks are going to be getting $600. Now, O is going to come through and, and give you the, the particulars and the specifics about this particular bill. But $600, man, families are going to be getting $600. $600 ain't going to do a motherfucking thing for most Americans. It ain't going to do shit for most black folk. The audacity of these folk to give $600 and for some of these politicians to actually say that this is a good thing. To, to phrase in such a manner that motherfuckers should be more gracious and grateful for this is highly disrespectful. But now you got these other motherfuckers coming out and arguing back and forth, talking about, hey, if it would have been me, I would have gave you 2000 If it would have been me, I would have gave you $1,200. It is so incredibly troubling to see how Americans are being treated in the midst of this pandemic and then we compare it to other countries who immediately did a more critical and severe lockdown. But not only did the lockdown, man, just made sure that people was taken care of, bro. I'm frustrated. I, I, I'm deeply frustrated because I work with these people. I'm out here in my community trying to help folks. And I see us suffering. I see unemployment, man, being cut and having to stop. And then you want to throw these up people $300 extra unemployment. Bruh, I'm surprised. Well, I'm waiting for the day. Oh, I'll wait for you guys to go ahead and finish the chat, man. I won't add the violence in there, good shit. <laughs> All right, so let's take a step back, man, and just look at where, where we were and where we are now. So in March, we went into shutdown mode. The cold country did. Politicians across the board, a Democratic-led Congress or House of Representatives and a Republican-led uh, Senate came together to finally put together a, what was it, $2.3 trillion bill to pay off each one of these industries, get money for small businesses and so on. And in the midst of that also provided $600 per week unemployment during this during that period as well as a $1,200 single time payment to people that met the financial or ramification, um, um, what do you want to call it? Uh, met the uh, financial uh, benchmarks to be able to receive $1,200. That's in addition to, I think, $600 or $400 per child. That was in March. Immediately in the beginning of April, Congress, the House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi and her folks put together another bill saying they wanted to spend another three point something trillion dollars to get additional monies out to those people that needed it. Um, there were politicians that came out immediately, especially specifically in the Senate, that said they weren't signing any bill because giving folks all of this additional monies during this period would be an incentive for Americans not to go back to work. So I want you to keep that in mind. Here we are now from March until December. Nine months later, you got a one-time payment of $1,200. Once. And Once. now they're giving you a one-time payment of $600. 
And that's six hundred dollars per husband, wife and dependents that you have. And you still need to meet certain parameters because if you don't, then you still not your money, your money continues to go down the toilet. And that this is a nine hundred billion dollar stimulus package. Now, before I get into the latest news that has happened, mm-hmm. I want to also take us back from the policy standpoint of how this all affected. Democrats Ooh. said, okay, we're going to, we're putting forward a $4.1 trillion stimulus package to get the industries up and running, give Americans money, put money in their pockets, small businesses, especially since motherfuckers didn't get these small businesses. A lot of small businesses didn't get that money. I get that money. Big <laughs> chains were getting the money. Yeah. Large churches got money. Ooh. Ooh. But not, did, did not get their money. Mm-hmm. Right? So time passes, time passes. They're not negotiating. They're not talking amongst themselves. Nancy Pelosi, towards the uh, the end of the summer, middle of the summer, starts holding out, says she's not signing anything unless, well, let me take a step back. They presented that package to Republicans in the Senate. They said, nope, meet us halfway. Democrats said, all right, we'll do 2.3, 2.3 trillion. Let's go. So, nope, we good. Y'all got to come down lower. Democrats said, okay, we'll come down lower. We'll do $1.4 trillion. How about that? Republicans said, nope, we good. Now here you are getting $900 billion with $600 stimulus possibly amongst yourselves. It just shows, for me specifically, it shows the ineptitude of Democrats to be able to negotiate because you allowed them to go from $4 trillion down to $900 billion and then turn around and tell folks, this was the best we could do. You should be happy. I mean, let's just take these checks and don't worry. When Joe Biden gets in office, we're gonna we're gonna send another check. Mind you, my cousin in Germany has was in shutdown. They were getting eighty five percent of their salary. Yep. Every everyone else in the world, everyone else in the modern world, world on the planet got taken care of, and we sitting here, we sitting here with twiddling our people, people in food in food lines. Have you seen the fucking food lines in Texas and Florida? Oh my God, Texas is out of control. Literally yeah. miles long. Yeah. Miles long that by the time they're able to hit maybe lunchtime, the food is gone. And there's still a mile and some change of people still waiting. $600. And they're giving you $600. And then have the audacity to say, we can't give you more than a one time payment because it might make you want to stay home and not work. Fuck out of here. Anyway, so now recently they passed this bill. The only thing left for them to do was to put this bill on the president's desk for him to sign it. So what did our homeboy Donald Trump recently say? He said, fuck y'all bill. I'm asking Congress to amend this bill and increase the ridiculously low $600 to $2,000 or $4,000 for a couple. I'm also asking Congress to immediately get rid of the wasteful and unnecessary items from this legislation and to send me a suitable bill or else the next administration will have to deliver a COVID relief package and maybe that administration will be me and we will get it done. Thank you very much. of reasons why your man threw the monkey oh. in the plans. Cassidy, <laughs> boy. Let's even take let's take another step back. Four hundred and seventy-five billion dollars from this nine hundred billion dollar package was money that was already reserved that did not get spent from the previous package. So it's not like they were bringing new monies. This was money they had already earmarked to be spent to give to folks like me and you already. Just endless greed. Endless. But you want to tell me that these folks that are making almost $200,000 a year, that give themselves a, increases in their salary almost every year, that give themselves all these endless vacations every year in, 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 a, in, a, in the Congress, thought that it was too much for you to get $600 additional a week for unemployment because it might make you stay home and not look for a job. Make you not want to work. Make you not want to work. 
a thousand. That was the, that was their two, fucking two thousand dollars is going to be enough to make me say, you know what? I don't want a job. I don't want to feed my kids. Nigga, in DC, <laughs> it says that you need to, your your average income, your average income in DC, DC needs to be one needs to be uh a hundred uh over a hundred thousand for you to make minimum. And that's just DC even to survive. And that's JC. And that's just and that's just Northwest DC. DC. That's that twelve hundred dollars didn't do shit for anybody that I know. Not here on the East Coast. That's like maybe, maybe three runs to the to, to the grocery store. So three basically, months. my man just came through and said he's not signing shit. He said he yeah. said he's going to veto the bill, which, like I said, puts Mitch McConnell in a tough spot because he thought that they were good. Mind you, like I said, there are a bunch of different reasons why Donald Trump is doing this now. One oh, of the cool. reasons because he he he's being a pissy baby or whatever. But to if you want to give me two thousand dollars, take that, take that, I'll, take I'll that. Take it. I'll take it every single every single time. Yeah, I'll take the two thousand. But now it makes them. And I'll, let me let me even bring it bring it back just a little bit. Mitch McConnell fought this bill tooth and nail. Said he was not not sign, putting his name on anything. You know what changed his mind? Because the runoffs in Georgia, they said that they were not getting a stimulus. They couldn't get money to the folks that needed it in Georgia. And it was hurting their Republican, their Republican candidates in Georgia during these runoffs. That's the only reason he came back to the table to start doing it. So let's just say, for example, if they had won and this was there were no runoffs, we'd be asked out. We wouldn't even be having this conversation. He said at the beginning that this bill was dead on arrival. Nancy Pelosi needs to keep her package there in the, in the Congress. Don't even bring it over here to the Senate. And this is the shit that we're facing right now. Bro, and that's the thing. So now <laughs> there's actually no date of when folks are going to get relief because these motherfuckers are in the position now where they're having a pissing contest. So while they're having a Man. pissing contest, folks are dying. And that's not hyperbole. Nope. That's not exactly that's literal. That. That's very literal. That's literally what is taking place. Folks are dying. Citizens. Citizens. American citizens. Tax Black, white, blue, citizens. green, skittle. Motherfuckers is dying. Taxpayers are dying. Because they cannot take care of, of their families or themselves. I work currently, I work for a company, man, that, that specializes in helping homeless people find housing. I particularly work with people who have drug and alcohol uh, issues who are also homeless. And these are people who are trying to find housing. This past quarter, Pennsylvania offered up this large amount of money to assist these people in getting housing. But they put this ignorant behind stipulation on it where they were only able to give individual housing, same thing, a $700 one time check to assist them in paying their rent and their utilities. $700, man. But even in the giving them the seven hundred dollars, there were still other stipulations you had to meet. You had to be employed, bro. It was just your stipulations were crazy, huh? It was so unrealistic. <laughs> and I went on the phone with these men and women crying because they had no idea how they were going to pay their rent, knowing that in March this eviction moratorium is going to be lifted, and these motherfucking landlords who have not been getting paid. Bruh, are going to be kicking these folks out on the street. I know that they said a lot of uh, courthouses now that they've seen, this is according to CNN anyway, uh, a lot of courthouses have seen new filings for evictions in the preparation for the moratorium Good being removed. So there's going to be a huge housing crisis that happens once all of this goes away. And like I said, here's Donald Trump saying, I'm not going to sign anything, increase the amount of money that you're given. Meanwhile, all of these things are going to expire. So we're still caught between a rock and a hard place. Luckily enough for us, even though we've probably had dips and lays here and there, us three, we've right. still been able to work the majority of this pandemic. So we've been blessed yeah. in that regard. But I know folks that haven't had a job since April. 
I know folks that have been doing menial work that lasts like a couple of weeks and then they're off for like a month before they're able to get another job again. Food lines, miles long. I cannot stress that enough. Children unable to eat because everything's locked down. And I know that there's going to be a group of people that are going to say, just open everything back up. They shouldn't be locking things down. Restaurants well, need to can die. Like, that's not the answer either. This idea of just opening things back up. Even if you open up the business back up, that doesn't immediately stimulate the economy to put things back into position. No. People are still, no. they're behind yeah. because of the pandemic. Thank you, sir. Back yeah. up does not it, somehow erase yeah, everything that's been drawn. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. you. Do you know, I mean, we all, do you know what, what, the, what that first influx of cash is going? All Credit the board. bills that have been piled Credit up board. behind Credit them. Board. Credit insurer, insurance companies out the yang are, are waiting for their money. That first flush of cash. So I'm sure they don't like that bill either. It doesn't make sense to me why these politicians and lawmakers are opposed to a larger stimulus check. Yeah. If the, the, if the point of the stimulus check is to actually stimulate the economy, doesn't it make sense that you actually want to give people a larger sum of money for them to be able to buy things, particularly around the holidays? And giving them to stimulate the economy? I mean, that. Am I wrong here? Does that make no, sense? you're you're one hundred percent right. Money but, maybe not want to work. But Republicans gave all this money two years ago for tax hikes, so they don't have the money to give to folks like me and you. So I mean, like I said, all of it is a big goddamn mess. To be honest with you, man, and I don't know where we're going to be. I'll put it this way: there were companies that were coming, like heads of these major five uh, Fortune 500 companies coming to the White House, people that are on Wall Street coming to the White House, talking to other politicians, saying, dude, pass a goddamn stimulus. This was like in April, May, throughout the entire summer. Give these folks money. This is the only way the economy is going to survive. Give these folks money so they, because they're going to spend it. That'll help keep us out of the woodwork. There are uh, financial experts now saying that the economy will never get back to where it was before the pandemic, at least for another three years, because folks are still going to be playing catch up. All of the industries are going to be playing catch up. That doesn't make any sense, man. And, and again, I don't, I don't try to introduce the violence component in there intentionally, but I know in other countries, they burn shit down for less. Like, Yes, in all I honesty, I'm I'm honestly amazed of how well Americans have taken this news in light of everything that's taking place. I, I the media told them shocked. that they should be happy with what they're getting. Don't forget, like as soon as the bill passed, I I swear every single network that I saw was like, "Congratulations, we passed the bill finally, getting help to people that need it." No, my guy. A bunch of no, rich my guy, that never do anything, man. <laughs> So hey, I mean, I, I, I mean what, what do they think people are going to do with six hundred dollars? They're going to stay stay right at home. Listen, you know how, it, it, you know how it, long six hundred dollars is going to last in most like people? that one. I, one, I was barely half of one bill. I was telling my mother-in-law, we were having this conversation. My mother-in-law was That's like, "Why don't you do X, Y, and Z?" We're like, "We can't do that because this is." pre-pandemic. We can't do X, Y, and Z because of the kids and we pay for um, aftercare and daycare for the kids. Childcare for the kids is sent for our children, essentially. And she said, okay, so how much is childcare? I told her, I said, mom, childcare for both of these kids is $1,800 a month. Child care in the United Ooh. States. Listen to what I'm saying. Child care in the United States is equivalent to a semester of in-state tuition at your college. Oh my God. That's how much it costs, my guy. That's no exaggeration. Look it up. Oh, man. No, and no, you no, expect no to survive off six hundred dollars? Bro, I think about adoption. Man. What are you doing? Oh my god. No, no, no. But don't even think about the food oh. cost. The food we haven't even touched the food more. cost. During the pandemic, oh, how much I'm food did you to go through during the pandemic, My bro? My God. Listen, man. And you, I hit it, you, you hit it on the I, damn I, head. I, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> say it again? 
true. The she amount of money you spend on food because everybody's she home eating. So your your food cost goes up, your electricity goes up, your water usage water goes, goes up. Water bill goes up. Yeah. Water, yeah. water bill is going my up. Water bill, my water bill is stupid up. this month. It's Electric like bill is here. going up. I don't want to depress people anymore than I'm already depressed about this bullshit. 